What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. This is part two of the four part series on how to create a Power BI admin view report. In the previous part, we covered how to connect to the Power BI REST API in order to bring in data around workspaces, data sets, data flows, reports, and users. In this video, we're gonna learn how to reach out and grab a refreshable access token so that we can refresh all of these different queries whenever we want. As you might remember, we were getting a static token directly off of the Power BI API Explorer, and that token would expire every now and then, but we're gonna get a new token each time we wanna refresh so that our refresh will succeed every time. I also wanna give a quick shout out to Mark Lillifelt. He was talking to me about the Power BI API rate limiting, which I hadn't run into at this point, but he told me he had run into it in the past. So the way we were actually connecting to the data sets, data flows, and reports, and users, it was actually through looping through that API, and we actually might run into API limits if we do have a lot of workspaces or a lot of reports or users. So he actually showed me a better way to get all of this data and not run into any API limits. So I'm actually going to transition some of the work that we did to that new form Format. So another big shout out to Mark. Make sure you check out his blog. I followed him for years. He is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to Power BI. So go ahead and check out his blog. It is linked down in the description. So we're looking at the final setup right now. We have our six queries here. I actually added dashboards because it's very easy to grab with the new method. And then finally a function to get the new access token. And that feeds each of these queries. So we don't really need to show you much here. Let's go ahead and go over to our other file where we are gonna start building this out. So let's go to our other report. I'm in the demo file and let's open up the query editor and see where we left it off in the last video. So I have a few different functions here to get data sets, get users, get reports, not actually necessary at this point. So I'm actually going to delete these queries and sorry if you're having to do a little bit of extra work, but this way is much better and much cleaner in order to get that data. We'll only need to connect to the API one time. So actually I can go ahead and get rid of these functions as well and just leave our workspaces. And let's open up the advanced editor. We can see that we went through several steps in order to get this. We also see that we have that static token in here, which we are gonna replace in this video. So here's the key to getting all this data without having to loop through each of those different API endpoints. We actually just need to add something to the end. And I have part of it here. So it's this expand function. So we can put that right after top. So we're connecting to the workspaces in this query. So here's part of our URL path. Then we connect to admins, groups, top 100. We can change this up to 5,000 if you need it, but I don't have that many workspaces. And then this expand keyword. So it's the money sign, expand, and then you can set all of the different levels that you want to expand to. So I'm including data sets, data flows, reports, dashboards, and users. So let's go ahead and click done and see what this gives us. And of course the access to the resource is forbidden because my temporary key has expired. So I'm actually going to get my key in a different way and I'll show you this in just a little bit. So I'm gonna get my new key here. And remember this is a secret key you don't wanna share with anybody. So I'm gonna grab my key and then I'm gonna throw that in directly to my query. So let me just get part of that and paste that in there and click done. And now I should be able to get some of that data back. So we'll see that if I get rid of my steps until expanded column, let's expand this again, getting our new columns that are coming in. Let's load more, make sure we get everything. So we now have these data sets, data flows, reports, dashboards, and users column. Uh, those are actually gonna bring back lists. So that's actually perfect. And I just realized I don't want that column name to kind of come in as the prefix. So I'm gonna get rid of that moving forward. So I have everything I need here. I'm actually gonna change this to group ID. Perfect. And before I reference this uh, query, I wanna make sure that I do what I should have done previously and get rid of personal groups and groups. I just want my workspaces and I only want those workspaces that are active. And then as previously, I'm going to get rid of my LinkedIn sales navigator as well as QuickBooks Online and one other because I know these aren't going to return any user data. So these are really just the workspaces that I use on a normal basis. And then moving forward, I can reference this query in order to get the other relevant information. So let me go ahead and reference workspaces. I'm gonna set up the data sets query. So I'm going to keep group ID highlighted, come over to data sets, control click, and remove other columns. So I have my group ID and data sets. And now we can expand this out. So let's expand to new rows 
expand the records, and here is all my data set information. That's perfect. And then I also need to change this to just say data set ID and data set name. It's as easy as that. I have all of my other data set information. So I'm going to go through and do this for the other four, such as reports, data flows, dashboards, and users. So you can go ahead and fast forward to uh, later in the video, but I am going to just go ahead and go through each of these manually. So I'm going to reference that workspace, uh, reference that go ahead and get rid of everything except data flows and then expand this out the exact same way so I say I only have one data flow there so I'm gonna go ahead and filter out the nulls and then that's my only data flow that I have available to me I call this data flows and just a couple more times here so reference I'll do reports next So let's see what we have in reports. When we expand this out and get all of our information. Uh, and I forgot to do this on data flows, but I'm gonna call this report ID and report name. This is gonna make it easier to make uh, the actual visualizations when it's done because we'll know what we're looking at. And data flow ID. All right, that's data flow name. Data flow name. Then just a few more times here. Let's get our uh, dashboards. Let's get that information, expand this out, get all of the relevant dashboard information. And we can filter for null again. Those are groups that do not have any dashboards. So let's call this dashboard ID and dashboard name and let's call that dashboards and then one more time let's just do it for the users so let me go ahead and reference so while we're holding down control we just get the users and group ID column let's expand this out perfect and I don't think we need to do anything else on the users query let's just call this users and we have all of our data, but it's all coming from one reference query. So we're only gonna hit that API once. So after all that, let's get to the meat of this video. That's on how to create that refreshable token. So the first thing you need to do is go to this specific website. It's actually called dev.powerbi.com apps. This is going to allow you to register an application and this is just going to allow you to hit the API that's going to give you that refreshable access token. So it's actually really easy to do. You just sign into Power BI here. I'm signed in and then I need to register my application. Let's give my application a name. I'm gonna call this admin view demo. And we wanna make sure that we select the native application type. That's gonna be the easiest for us to set this up. And then we need to grant some level of API access. So we actually don't need any of these. The one that we're gonna need is found in a different location. But just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and grab all of the read-only APIs because it can't hurt. So let's go ahead and get these read-only APIs and click register. This is going to give you your application ID. You do wanna keep this secret as well. So I'm just gonna show you part of the string that's on my screen. And then next, you actually need to go to portal.azure.com. This is your Microsoft Azure portal. And once you're here, you need to click on app registrations. You can also search for app registrations if you're not seeing it. And that's gonna bring all of the app registrations that you have tried to register in the past. And we can see my new admin view demo application. So we can click on that. We'll see some useful information here. But the really important part is the API permissions. We see all the API permissions that I just selected for this application. These are all my read-only uh, APIs. And interestingly enough, we actually need to click on Add Permission, come down to Power BI Service, and go to Delegated Permissions. And there's actually one more permission that we need to uh, give here. So under Tenant, which wasn't available on the previous screen, we need to click on Tenant.ReadAll. So this is going to allow us to get some of that deeper information about our tenant since we are the admin. Let's click on add permissions. And now we should see that tenant.readall. And then finally, let's click grant admin consent for your company, minus BI Elite. 
So we can now see that we have uh, this check mark granted for BI Elite for all of my permissions, including tenant.readall. So we're doing good. Let's go back to our Power BI file. So that is in this part two demo. So now we need to create a way to grab a refreshable token. And the easiest way to figure out exactly how to go through those steps is opening up Postman. I definitely recommend installing this. If you do not have this installed, it's gonna help you work with APIs in the future. It makes it really easy to make these calls. So in order to get a new token, you have to make a post request to a specific URL. We're looking at the URL here, https uh, colon backslash backslash login.microsoftonline.com. And then everything between the next slashes is my tenant ID. And you can grab that tenant ID. If you quickly look at the app on portal.azure.com, you can see your tenant ID here. You can even copy it to clipboard. And then after that tenant ID, you just need to do OAuth2 slash token. And once you have that, you need to actually send some information in the body. So make sure you do this um, URL exactly, but swap out for your tenant ID uh, between .com and OAuth2. And then finally, you need to come to the body and you need to pass in this information in the body. So I've selected form data, and that's going to allow me to easily put in all of this information. So you need a parameter for grant type, and you, it needs to say password, username, your Power BI username, password, your Power BI password, client ID, you need to type in your client ID, which mine is displayed here in the portal as well if you need to grab that, or you may have copied it when you were registering the app previously. Then finally, resource, and you need to pass in this exact URL, https uh, colon backslash backslash analysis.windows.net slash Power BI slash API. And then finally, scope, open ID. I think this one might actually be optional. You might actually not even need that one. And then if you are working in Postman, it's as easy as sending this send button and then you will get some information back. You'll even see the access token with your new JWT as we saw in the previous video. So it's that easy to get that new refreshed access token. So now that we've successfully done this in Postman, let's do it in Power BI. So it's actually pretty easy to do there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new query here. So new source, blank query, and this won't have anything in it. So I have a few steps already written up here. So I'm gonna grab these two steps and put these in. So let me paste those there and let's return our data step. And let me get some better formatting here. So there we go. So our body is everything that was in that form section. So everything that's in here and we actually need to put it in a specific format. So it's not actually in a form anymore. So grant type equals password separated by an and resource equals that URL that I had shown you, uh, and username equals, and then my username, password equals my password, and I'm definitely gonna hide this because this is a very sensitive item. One thing to keep in mind, HTTP post requests are fairly secure. I did some research on this, but they're not the most secure thing. But this is the actual way that Microsoft is asking you to reach out and get this access token. If I knew of a different way that didn't require entering in your username and password, I would definitely use it. But as far as this native uh, application type that we selected, instead of the server side application type, which is more difficult to set up, I could not figure out how to do this without a username and password. So do keep this in mind if you don't wanna be sending your username and password across the web here, then maybe you create a separate account with a uh, separate password in order to get this admin data. But do keep that in mind. This is fairly secure and the proper way to do it. Um, but just something to keep in mind. So we have that body. It's just this long string with all of our uh, form information in there. And then next we need to type in data equals web.contents. And this is the same URL in order to get that access token. We actually see that we're just typing in common here instead of the tenant ID. So go ahead and do that. So it's just this URL right here. And we need to pass in some parameters. Uh, we have a headers parameter, content type equals application slash X. Uh, dash www dash form dash url encoded that's fairly important and then finally content so content equals text.to binary and our body so this is actually converting our git request to a post request this is how you do it in power query and it's turning this body into the binary representation of this text string and that's going to pass it through and create that post request so let's actually click done 
and let's see what we return here. So we need to go through some steps to get this in a usable format. And we see I have an access token here. I'm gonna right click and click drill down. So here's my new access token. That's all it took. I can actually refresh this as many times as I want and I will get new access tokens. So that's perfect. I can go ahead and copy and paste this into my original query, but we can do a little bit better than that. We can return this back in the form of a function. So let me go down and create a function just with an open and close parentheses. And that's just gonna make it a function and it's still gonna return the same access token output. So now it is a function. I can call it get access token and I'm gonna move this up to functions. And now that's perfect. So the only place that requires that we need to um, insert in that JWT is right here. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'm just going to append after bearer and uh, let's do get access token with parentheses so that we call it and let's click done. And as you can see, if I click on refresh preview, it's working perfectly. So the new access token is constantly being updated and brought back to us and it's being passed into our workspaces query via calling that function. And then if you recall, these are just referencing the workspace uh, query so that we don't actually have to call for any new access token in these last five queries. So with that, let's go ahead and click close and apply and Let's go back and make sure that we can have this data flowing through and getting that access token and refreshing our model. So let's load that in and let's click refresh just one more time to see if this works. But now we do have that refreshable token. So this is a pretty long video, but it is fairly involved in order to get that new token. And we also went through that refactor phase in order to make sure that we don't hit those API limits. So moving forward, we're good to go. In the next video, we're actually going to cover how to get all of the user activity off of your Power BI tenant. This is a pretty in-depth topic because it's a pretty difficult API call to do. We actually need to loop through and call it multiple times. So it's gonna be a really fun one. So definitely stick around for next week, probably next Tuesday, when we come out with part three of this Power BI admin view series. And then finally part four, we're gonna visualize this data. So I hope you like this long informative video. We covered some really great topics here and I'll see you in the next video.